when you look at underperformance and how that translates into sales staff turnover, the average sales tenure for a B2B salesperson now is 16.8 months. The other thing that's costing organisations enormous amounts in opportunity from a sales point of view, you spoke about at the event, yep. is turnover of salespeople. Yep. Um, and there's obviously a lot going on by way of uh, failing salespeople, churning every 12 to 18 months, Yes. Um, not reaching their quota. So yep. I think there's a, there's a problem there around um, creating success for salespeople. Yep. Um, and then there's another issue around, uh, you know, perhaps different generations wanting to experience different things earlier. Um, you know, they'll talk about the, the millennials, millennials wanting to, you know, move on within two or three years. And, and so the opportunity cost is huge. You went through some numbers at, at the event. Do you mind sort of sharing, you know, yeah. what the cost is and perhaps we can get onto what the solution is as well? Yeah, absolutely. Look, um, I write extensively about this particular topic in the book. Um, when you look at the context that we're all competing in now as salespeople, the stuff that we've just talked about, um, we're seeing more and more underperformance. In other words, people that are failing to meet or exceed their quota. Yeah. And that number, depending on, again, who you, which analyst you believe, that number's well above 50%. Some say it's 75%, some say it's 63%. Um, but certainly we're seeing more and more salespeople not getting their quotas. Now, someone at the event um, jo sort of semi-jokingly said, oh, that's because quotas are set way too high. Yep. And there's an element of that in that as well. But when you look at underperformance and how that translates into sales staff turnover. The average sales tenure for a B2B salesperson now is 16.8 months. Now think about this. It takes on average seven months to onboard and train a salesperson to get them to maximum productivity. Then you've got them leaving at 16.8 months. So they've got 10 months to create a return. Yeah. That's just not sustainable. In fact, it's ridiculous. Um, there was a study that was done out of the US um, that, that showed or highlighted that every time that happens, the cost to the business for separation cost, rehiring, retraining is about $148,000 Australian. But that doesn't factor into all of those costs that I talked about during the keynote, which is while that salesperson's disengaged, either decided I'm moving on, or I'm gonna go to a new job, or being managed out, there's a period of some months, I would say three to five months, where that person has disengaged. While they're disengaged, the territory's underserved. While the territory's underserved, the competitors are coming in and picking up the customers. So when you look at that um, and that downswing in, in the territory for that period, if you add up all of those costs, some are saying that can be as, as expensive as a million dollars. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's understating it. Well, if the budget's two million and they've been unproductive for, for, for an entire year, well, it's, it's two million. So look at the, that. Forget the sales guy for a second, let's talk about the territory. If that salesperson's been three months disengaged and then they're gone, turnover happens here, yep. then there's another three to six months before you find someone to fill the role, yep. re-recruiting. Re yep. Then there's that seven months that I talked about to get them up to speed. That's, you know, 16 months. And look, it's, it's, it's a problem we obviously encounter a lot with organisations. Your role, And yeah. as we're taking on a vacancy, we're asking, why did the last salesperson fail? If, if that's in fact the case and if that's why we're recruiting. And yep. there's two reasons why that keep on coming up. There's a theme around that. Um, you know, it's either that they're the, the sales leader, and this is uh, interesting in line with the uh, inbound marketing conversation we're having, um, but the sales leader's feeling is that they're not playing the numbers game with prospecting and they're not meeting enough customers. Um, so that's the single most common reason we're told. Yep. And the second is that they're not um, got the commercial acumen to, to have a, a business conversation that uncovers real needs mm. and challenges the customer. So a lack mm. of that challenge of sales profile. Mm. Um, but you know, so that, that's often why the sales leaders are perceiving that, that their sales people are not working out. Um, there may be a number of organizational issues if it's happening repetitively. So I ask them, is that happening repetitively within your organization? Mm. Because then they need to look at themselves, don't they? Um, and look, there, there's so many challenges with, with getting the right salesperson, but I think if an organization is going to come on board with the inbound concept rather than the push concept of selling, um, the ability to get the people to succeed, it, these organizations that do that well, mm. the success rate is much higher than 60% of oh, yeah. their salespeople, isn't it? It is. And look, I get annoyed about this, Steve. Um, yeah. I feel for salespeople and I feel for sales leaders to some extent mm. as well, but yeah. if you're a salesperson that's being driven you know, like it was still 1990, yep. um, volumetrics on quota and, you know, number of meetings, number of 
calls you've made during the yeah. day, then you're on a hiding to nothing to some extent. Mm. So I feel for those people, that's only going to lead to underperformance mm. because buyers don't want to buy that way anymore. Yep. They can't be bothered being interrupted. They don't want some sales guy pushing them. So yeah, I think what you touched on there with creating the inbound, again, the savvy businesses these days are spending a lot more time focusing on content marketing, social and digital, developing systems that can scale to create the inbound yep. to support the salespeople to be successful. Mm. Um, and if you're not doing some of that, you're in trouble now. Yeah, it's an interesting one because the sales leader will point to their top performers and say, well, they can do it. Um, and so in a lot of instances, they're 200% of target. So they're, they're, it's certainly feasible. Mm. Um, and, and these are people that have a hell of a lot of drive yep. um, and, and, and hunger. Yep. And that is the minority of the sales community. Yep. You know, and that's why you have those top sort of 20% performers that our clients are consistently asking us for. And, and that's what we're really honing in on when we're recruiting is that drive and that, um, I guess, burning fire so as we can find that top 20%. Yep. But that's all well and good for the top 20%. Yep. If you're looking at organizational sales performance, you need to look deeper than, uh, you know, wh how do we get the middle up? How do we make sure that that bottom 30, 40% that's dropping off every 12 yep. to 18 months, how do we get a larger proportion of them to the middle? So as, as an organization, we're performing effectively because Correct. finding the top 20% performers, making them 100% of your team, um, you'd want to have a pretty big budget in your in your salary cap in order to, to, to maintain having top 20% performers across your whole team, I would imagine. Yep. Look, the clients that I deal with that are successful are doing everything we've just talked about. But yep. to your point, um, in terms of creating a high performance sales culture, mm. it's all about range management. How do you get your A and B players to continue performing the way they are, mm. but bringing up the C and D players you know, and meeting them in the middle? Yeah. So yeah, look, it's, it's a challenge. It's always a challenge. But um, as Peter Drucker said many years ago, culture each strategy for breakfast. Yeah. And that's why I talked during the session about the importance of creating the right culture. Mm. Um, this, this culture of constant turnover and I mean, Think about what that does to the buyer. The mm. buyer's dealing with a revolving door of salespeople. Yeah. And pretty soon that impacts your brand and your company. Mm. So it's crazy. We have to stop it. <laughs>